Hello, welcome to the Liberty Church of Christ. We are going through the Bible tonight. We're on lesson number 95, and we're back in Acts. Get your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 19, and we'll begin at verse number 23. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to follow uh, Paul through these missionary journeys through the eyes and the pen of Luke. We pray, Father, that as we go through our journey in life, that we will be better because of what you've given us in the Bible. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, you remember that Paul is actually on his third missionary journey when he paused to write 1 Corinthians, which we looked at the last two lessons. Let's review to get us back up to where we are in Acts chapter 19. Remember that Paul and Barnabas went on their first missionary journey from Antioch. They went through Cyprus. They went on up to Pergus of Pamphylia, then on to Antioch of Pisidia, where they left the synagogue there, shook the dust off of their clothes and said, to the Gentiles we go, because you Jews have refused us. So they went on down to Lystra and Iconia and Derbe, and there Paul was a stone, and then they prayed for him. He got up the next day. He, he traveled on back through Derby and Lystra and Iconia and back to Antioch and then back down to Pergus. And that's when uh, they established elders in all those congregations and went on back to Antioch of Syria where they got started. And that was their first missionary journey. Now, they got ready to go on their second missionary journey. Now, at this point, between the first and second missionary journey, I personally believe that he wrote the letter to the Galatians. And we looked, stopped, and we looked at the letter to the Galatians. Then, uh, they decide they're going to go on a second missionary journey, but Barnabas wanted to choose John Mark. But Paul, he didn't like that idea because John Mark had left them on their first missionary journey. So, Paul chose Silas, and they went by land up to Cilicia and over there to uh, Lystra and Derby, by land. And Barnabas chose John Mark, and they went on to Cyprus there. So Luke doesn't follow Barnabas and John Mark, but he does follow Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas pick up Timothy there in Lystra and Derby, and they circumcise him because he is half Jew, half Gentile. His daddy's a Greek. His mama's a Jew. Uh, and he didn't want to call, and he didn't circumcise and be saved, but he just don't want to cause problems wherever he goes and, and conscience issues. So now we got three guys, uh, Paul, Silas, and Timothy. They continue to go west till they get to Troas, where they pick up Luke. Dr. Luke joins them at Troas. They get the Macedonian call on the second missionary journey, and they're going up to Philippi, where they baptize uh, the Philippian jailer, and they baptize Lydia, the seller of purple. And then they leave there because of persecution, and then they're going over to, uh, from Philippi to the Thessalonica. There in Thessalonica, they only spend about three weeks uh, because there's a problem. The Jews stir them up and they have to leave. And so they leave Thessalonica and go to Bereans. The Bereans were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they study the word and they check the scriptures out and find out whether what Paul is saying is true or not. And, of course, it was true. And then Paul leaves Silas and Timothy in um, Berea and he goes on down to Athens where he preaches there at Mars Hill. Then he moves, he doesn't get a good response there. They establish a congregation, there's a few important people that become Christians, but not as many as he would like. So he leaves Athens, he goes to Corinth, and he gets a job. He picks up uh, with Aquila and Priscilla, and he's a tent maker, and he goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath days. But then Silas and Timothy come down from Berea. Of course, they don't find him in Athens, they find him over in Corinth. And they said, there's some great things going on in Thessalonica. So what does Paul do? He writes 1 Thessalonians. They misinterpret the letter a little bit, so he has to clarify with 2 Thessalonians. And we looked at both of those letters during that time. Then he leaves uh, Corinth, and he takes Aquila and Priscilla with him, and moves on over to Ephesus. In Ephesus, he drops Aquila and Priscilla off, and then he goes on down to Jerusalem, Paul does, and makes the uh, Jewish holiday there. And then he moves back on up to Antioch of Syria, where he reports about his second missionary journey, because he just completed it. While he's gone, Aquila and Priscilla, they convert uh, Apollos. He knows about John the Baptist's baptism, but not about Jesus. So they expound the word more perfectly to him, and he becomes a Christian. And he moves from Ephesus and goes over to Corinth, where he becomes their regular preacher. And they love him. As a matter of fact, the uh, book of Acts says he helped them much. And uh, a lot of people appreciate Apollos. Well, Paul, in the meantime, has left Antioch of uh, Syria, and he's making his way back to Ephesus. When he gets to Ephesus, he sets up a school in Tyrannus, 
And for two years, he preaches in that school, and the whole of Asia hears about the gospel. And there he is at this time. Now, while he's there, he hears from the house of Chloe, which is in Corinth. He hears from uh, different letters that he gets because he tells them in that first letter, whereof you have written unto me. So they've written letters about some questions. And then uh, three guys come, Stephanus, Fortunatus, and Archaicus, uh, and give some money to Paul uh, from Corinth to refresh him. And he was refreshed, but they also no doubt told him about problems they were having in Corinth. So he sits down and writes 1 Corinthians. So uh, he does that while he's there in Ephesus for those two and three, those three years, actually. So now Paul is planning at this juncture in Acts 19 to stay in Ephesus, as he told them in the first Corinthians letter at the very end of it. He plans to stay there until Pentecost, the Jewish holiday. But something's going to happen to change his mind. He's on his third missionary journey. He has already planned to go to Macedonia and Achaia again. He's even sent Timothy and Erastus ahead of him to plan for that trip and pave the way. But he's going to stick around until Pentecost. But he don't get to. Something happens. He has to leave early. What happens? Well, here's what happens in Acts chapter number uh, 20, or 19. In Acts chapter number 19, a fellow by the name of Demetrius, who is a silversmith. Now, silversmiths use their talent to make idols in this case. And his big business was the goddess Diana. The Ephesians were well known for the worship of Diana, the goddess. And he would make little idols out of silver, maybe big idols out of silver. And there was his income. Well, the more people become Christians, the less they worship Diana. And this caused him to go out of business or just about it. So he calls all of his fellow silversmiths in and tell them, we got a problem. Our business is going belly up because this silly guy named uh, Paul is out there preaching about this Jesus. And he's telling everybody that there is no goddess Diana. So these guys stir up the town, and they start kind of waving the flag of Diana. They say, we're the Ephesians, and we're known in the world for worshiping Diana. And, and this guy is robbing us from this, and these Christians here, we, we don't love them. We don't appreciate them. And he kept stirring it up until finally there was a riot. The entire city just started rioting. You can imagine the riots that we have in America from time to time in these cities where they're busting windows and, and burning cars and so forth, where well, they're having a similar riot. And Luke tells us in Acts that most of them don't even know what they're rioting about. But when you get a crowd moving like that in a riotous fashion, this everybody just kind of joins in. But they make their way to the Colosseum, which is a big Colosseum in Ephesus. And they are... They've grabbed a couple of Christians. Their names is Gaius and Aristarchus. They bring them into the Colosseum, and they're no doubt doing bad things to these guys, and they're ridiculing them and uh, because they hate Christians now. They, this Demetrius has stirred up the whole town to turn against the Christians because uh, they hate Diana. Their, that's their country. That's their identity, you know. Ours in America is hot dogs, apple pie, and baseball. And if you come over here and start talking about those things, you know, a good American would say, well, you can't disparage hot dog, apple pie, and, and baseball. But uh, anyway, they are doing that with the goddess Diana, and it's causing everybody to be mad. You've touched their, their civil identity, and now they're turning against Christians in, in large numbers. Well, Paul uh, heard that that was going on in the Colosseum, and so he was about to go into the Colosseum to address the crowd. No doubt, after three years, he, he's no, he knows many of them. And so the disciples, the Christians, said, you can't go in that Colosseum. These guys are nuts. They're in a riotous fashion. They, they're out of their mind. They, they, they won't listen to you. So please don't go into that Colosseum. Some of the high officials in Asia who were friends of Paul sent word to Paul, don't you dare go into that Colosseum. It will be bad for you if you do. Now, the Jews in the area 
wanted to quiet this thing down too. So they had a, a speaker that they sent into the Colosseum to try to quieten the crowd down, the Ephesians, the Gentiles, and his name was Alexander. And he was just about to speak to them when they all found out he was a Jew, and they don't like Jews either. So they shouted him down. In fact, they cried, Great is the goddess Diana for two solid hours. Finally, the town clerk came in, and he got them to listen. And he gave them an argument that scared them to death. He said, Let me tell you, this is an illegal assembly, and the Roman Empire is going to hear about it, and they're going to call us into question about what we're doing here. The federal government is going to get involved. And if we don't shut this thing down, we're going to get in trouble with the federal government, the Roman authorities. And with that word, they shut up and they calmed down and they went home and they broke up the riots. But that was a signal for Paul. I'm getting out of Dodge. He wasn't necessarily afraid. He's ready to die for Jesus at any time. He was ready to go in that Colosseum, you know. But it was expedient. You know, all things are lawful for Paul, but all things are not expedient. So it was the right thing. And he had already planned a trip to Macedonia and Corinth anyway. He's in the middle of his third missionary journey, even though he's been there three years, took a three-year stay in that missionary journey. But he's already sent Timothy and Erastus ahead uh, to pave the way for him to go through Macedonia and on down to Greece so that he can get money to carry to the suffering saints in Jerusalem that were having this famine. So, so he was already ready to go, and so he did. He left Ephesus at that time. Then in Acts chapter 20, verses 1 and 2, we are learning that he, he went to Macedonia, and, that's where, and he visits the churches there. That's where Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea is, the northern area. And he visits all that area. Now, while he's up there, he bumps into Mr. Timothy. And he and Timothy sat down, and they write a letter to the Corinthians down south in Achaia. And he writes this letter to kind of pave the way for them to come on into Corinth. He already wrote him one letter in 1 Corinthians. Now he's writing this second letter. Now, it's possible that Paul has written more than two letters. Uh, some people suggest that 2 Corinthian letter has actually two letters in it, uh, maybe a third letter that he wrote that kind of got incorporated in the second. I'm not a scholar, so I'm not going to go into that study because he says things that kind of indicate that, where he said, this is the second time I come to you. If you look in there, well, it's the second time. I thought he's only been once. Uh, or this is the third time I come to you in this Second Corinthian letter. Uh, and that kind of makes you scratch your head. And some people suggest that maybe he's coming to him in a letter. Or maybe he physically went to him. Maybe during that three years in Ephesus, he was just right across the Aegean Sea from him. And maybe he made a visit to him that Luke didn't tell us about. We don't know. Uh, so you do that study for yourself and, and dig up the scholarly works on that and and if you'd like to share it with me, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. But what we do know is that we have 1 Corinthians and we have 2 Corinthians. And so we're going to look at it as a letter to itself. And Paul has met up with Timothy and he is going to tell them in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead and turn there. He's, he's in Macedonia and he's writing a second letter to the Corinthians. And here's what he tells him in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. I'm Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all of Achaia. So um, this letter is meant to go down there to Athens and Corinth and all the people that are in that country of Achaia, present-day Greece. So Paul is now writing them a letter. And what has happened is he's probably got word that these Corinthians are, are mad at him. They stay mad at him. They're fickle. And uh, one thing that they're mad at him about is, well, you promised you was going to come visit us. We got your first letter when you were in Ephesus. You said you were going to stay in Ephesus until Pentecost. And now we're hearing that you're in Macedonia. We thought you were going to come here. See, you can't trust Paul. 
Oh, he tells you one thing and he does something else. Uh, his yay is yay, his nay is nay, and he's wishy-washy. And a lot of people were accusing that with Paul. And Paul uh, answers them in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15 through 23. He says, let me tell you. He says, I'm not wishy-washy. My yay is nay. It's not yay and nay. It's yay. When I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something. Things just don't work out the way I planned them to work out. And, and sometimes they don't. Uh, he was going to stay in Ephesus till Pentecost, and that didn't work out. But he says, I am coming, but I'm coming to spare you. Uh, the reason I didn't come in, uh, to this point, I didn't come straight to you, is because I wanted to give you more time to straighten your act out. So there's a lot of problems that I wrote to you about in 1 Corinthians, and I uh, had to leave Ephesus early, so I'm giving you more time to straighten all those problems out because I didn't want to come with a rod. I wanted to come in love. And so he says in chapter 2, verse number 1 of 2 Corinthians, he says, But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. I'm not going to come to you when I'm mad. And, of course, Paul's not mad, but he's sad. You know, they got that guy that's with his stepmother uh, and having an affair with her, and they're suing each other, and they got all kinds of issues. But in this letter, he's going to have to tell them some things. First of all, forgive that guy that had an affair with his stepmother. You guys ain't done that yet. He's repented, and you need to take him back. So all those issues. So he's going to tell him in 2 Corinthians to um, uh, just follow up with 1 Corinthians and pave the way for a trip down there. And we're going to begin 2 Corinthians next week, Lord willing. But I also wanted to note in uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 3, that Paul then goes to Greece. And he stays there, and this is probably Corinth, for three months. So after Paul writes 2 Corinthians while he's in Macedonia, down to Corinth, he then comes to Corinth. He follows up with a visit. So they've done got two letters from him, 1 and 2 Corinthians. And he comes up with a visit, and he stays with them for three months. And remember, he told them in the first letter when he was in Ephesus that I, I might want to winter with you, spend the winter with you. That's about three months. So perhaps he does. But he comes down there, and we know for a fact that he spends three months. Now, during that three months, he's going to write another letter. And that other letter is to the Romans. And we have a copy of that letter, the Roman letter. He stops while, during that three-month period, and he writes the letter to the Romans. Now, he hasn't been to Rome, but he plans to go to Rome. In chapter 1 of Romans, everybody go to Romans Chapter number one, and look at verse number 10. He says, making request, if by any means, I'm praying to God, I'm making a request, what? If by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. At length means at last. At last, I'm almost ready to come to you guys. I've been all over Asia Minor, all over Achaia, all over Macedonia, and at last I'm planning a trip to Rome. So that's what Paul wants to do. In chapter 15 of Rome, Romans, verses 22 all the way down to verse 33, he's giving his travel plans. He says, here's what I want to do. I've got some gifts, money, that I've collected from Macedonia and Greece. And I want to carry that down to Jerusalem, to the suffering saints. I've got people going with me that have letters of authority to go with me from these churches. And they're all going to go with me, and we're going to go to Jerusalem, and we're going to give that money to the Jerusalem church and alleviate their, their famine issues, help them a little bit. But when I get that money delivered, and this is all in Romans chapter 15, he's writing to them. When I get that money delivered, I'm going to come to you guys. Finally, I get to come visit you guys. And when I get there, I, I plan to stay there for a little while, and I plan for you to give me some money and support me to go on a trip to Spain. I really want to go to Spain and evangelize in Spain and set up some churches there. Here's the issue with that. When he finally gets to Jerusalem, we're going to see that later in our study in Acts, he's going to be arrested. He didn't know that. When he wrote this letter in Corinth to the Romans, he thought he was just going to deliver the money and go to, go to Rome and then go on to Spain. But he gets arrested. 
And he's going to spend two years in jail. And then he's going to get transferred to Rome as a prisoner. Now, when he gets to Rome finally, after two years or more, as a prisoner, he calls for the Jewish people that's in Rome. And he has a meeting with them. And he tells them, did you get my letter? You know, I sent this letter to the church, the, the, the Roman letter to the Christians, but I wanted the word to get out of what kind of doctrine I'm teaching. And that's what the Roman letter is about. What kind of doctrine am I teaching? What's, what's the truth about a lot of things? The Roman letter is a great uh, church book. If you want to know about the church, you read Romans and you'll get a lot of information about what the church is all about. And he's telling that because he's probably thinking to, that these guys are hearing about all the persecution that they're accusing me of, all the lies, all the misinformation, and the fake news. So he's, he wrote this letter to the Christians in Rome to get the word out that he's, he's not what these people are saying he is. And he's teaching credible doctrine and true doctrine. So after two plus years, surely they've heard about him by now. And surely they've heard about all the accusations that he is yeah, because they, they're sending him to Rome to be tried by the Roman Caesar. So surely they know all about it. But let's read Acts. Everybody go to Acts. Acts chapter 28. And look at verse number 20. Acts 28 and 20. When Paul gets to Rome, he calls the Jewish leadership together. He's a prisoner in Rome under house arrest. And he calls these people together. And here's what he says. For this cause, therefore, I have called for you to see you and to speak with you because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with these chains. I'm not guilty of any of these lies that you no doubt heard about from my Jewish colleagues back there. I'm here because I believe in Jesus. The hope of Israel is the Messiah. And I'm preaching Jesus. I'm preaching Messiah. And uh, that's why I'm in prison. So I just wanted you to know that. Don't believe the lies. Don't believe the fake news. Well, look at verse 21 of Acts 28. And they said unto him, these Jewish leadership in Rome, we neither receive letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. Nobody's told us about you and, and about anything that you've been doing. So we haven't heard any news, much less fake news, but we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. We want to know what you have to say. For as concerning this sect, and that's Christianity, we know that everywhere is spoken against. Everybody don't like Christians, and we want to know more about Christianity. So Paul is going to tell them more about it when he gets there. But he is going to write a Roman letter that's going to tell them details about Christianity. So what we're going to do in the next few weeks, we're going to study 2 Corinthians and Romans, since they were written right side by side. And then after that, we will go back, Lord willing, to Acts chapter 20, verse number 3b, and continue our journey through Acts. Thank you for being in the class. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for everything that you do for us. And we pray that as we journey through Acts and these letters that we will be uh, understanding and we'll be full of wisdom to apply these things into our lives to be better. It's in Jesus' name we pray our prayer. Amen. Appreciate y'all so much being in this class. See you next week.